Hey, what's going on there guys? Bo here with Top Tech Cards and Games, and I'm back with another deck tech for you. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Grixis Delver for Modern, and uh, I've been playing a lot of Grixis Delver for Modern lately. I really like this deck. I think the deck is super, super sweet, uh, especially just because you get to just kind of recur all of your resources quite well through the use of cards like Snapcaster Mage, Golgan's Command, Tassiger in this deck. And I think it's really awesome where you just get to uh, smash in with like Tasker and Gurmaya Gangler on like turn two, turn three, and just throw them out onto the board and just kind of go from there. So I, I think this deck is really, really unique in that uh, it really, really uses the resources that it has in the deck extremely well, and it's it's super easy to recur them. So we're going to take a look at the deck. We're going to piece this out for the main board, talk about the cards, and then we'll get to the sideboard and why I have certain things in the sideboard and uh, what you should be playing in your sideboard. So first and foremost, Delver of Secrets, most important card in here. Uh, it's the mainstay of the deck, and that is basically what we're going to be building around. So we're going to be building with a lot of instants and sorceries because we want this Delver to flip on our upkeep. There's also manipulation that we can do with the Delver with um, fetch lands that we have on the battlefield already. Uh, this isn't really that relevant for us on like turn one because chances are we're, we're gonna play like land Delver pass on upkeep We don't really have any manipulation unless it's thought scour, but there is manipulation that can be done to uh, Make it so that you don't draw that card that re you reveal off Delver if you choose to not have it So uh, there there is a little bit of uh, cool stuff that you can do with the Delver in that but uh, ideally, you want it to flip on the following turn, and from there, you just keep uh, smashing away for three in the air uh, quite quick. So, uh, our next card is Snapcaster Mage. We're playing a play set of Snapcaster Mage because this card is broken. Whenever we're putting stuff into our graveyard already, getting to uh, get another go at all of our good cards is very, very important, especially whenever we can do it at instant speed, uh, usually instant speed. A lot of our cards are instance but sometimes we uh, recur those sorcery spells because they're they're nice and good for us uh, we have two tasker the golden fang so we can delve into this guy and for four mana we can activate his ability we mill ourselves two cards and then our opponent has to choose from the non-land cards that are in our graveyard at that point and we get one of them back to our hand which is kind of nuts uh, we also have one Gurmag angler so just a vanilla dude, 5-5 five, five for 7, but we get to delve away to cast our Gurmog Angler. So being able to drop this dude like on turn 3 is pretty good. It usually gets removed. They usually like terminate it. Path to Exile is even worse because you can't get it back with like Hogan's Command. But Gurmog Angler is a big threat and it's a very, very good blocker for cards like Thought Not Seer or Reality Smasher in the early game. Uh, we are playing a playset of Lightning Bolt because there's no reason not to be playing Lightning Bolt if you're playing a red deck, for the most part, in, uh, in Modern. There, there might be like a few, a few exceptions, but uh, usually with most of the decks, you're gonna be playing Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt's just broken. This card should probably be like a Mythic. Uh, we have a playset of Serum Visions to be able to manipulate the top of our deck, especially with our Delver, uh, but just in general, scrying two and drawing a card for one is pretty nice. We're also playing Fatal Push in here as well. So Fatal Push is our new addition from Aether Revolt. Fatal Push is broken because it gives us a little bit more leverage against decks like uh, Bant Company, or not Bant Company, uh, Bant Eldrazi, excuse me, where we get to uh, hit their Thought Not Seers much more easily. And uh, we, have a, we have a variety of different targets that we can hit with the Fatal Push, but overall, this was just a insanely good addition that we have now from Aether Revolt. So super happy to be playing this card and uh, in testing this card is been insane and in, even in practice in events that I've played in Fatal Push is just the stone nuts. I'm also playing a very unorthodox card in the main board. However, I can promise you this card is absolutely broken. So Surgical Extraction. We have two of these and Surgical Extraction is mainly here so that we can win matchups that we pretty much have no business winning otherwise. So uh, like Bant Eldrazi is a very bad matchup just because if they go powering through and playing like Reality Smasher, Thought Knots here and just kind of like overwhelming us while they have a Cabinet of Souls out so we can't counter their stuff, it's a problem. Like we can't do a whole lot against that, but what we can do is kill one of their threats surgically extracted from their deck and make sure that they are not playing any more copies of it. So uh, I've had my fair share of games, especially against Bant, where I would go kill one thing, 
and uh, surgically extract it or thought scour them, make them mill some stuff, and then go to uh, unpiece their deck from the good cards that they have. It's also really sweet because we play Snapcaster and we can recur the surgical extraction from our grave and then go towards uh, not letting our opponent play the game. It's, it's quite fun, I, I, I do have to say. Uh, we do have our play set of Thought Scour, so there's merit in playing it on yourself. There's merit in playing it against your opponent as well, uh, especially if they're manipulating anything with like scry effects or anything uh, along those lines. But mainly, Thought Scour is just good because it fuels up our Delve cards, it fuels up our Snapcaster, gives us some targets. But at the same pace, it just makes our Surgical Extraction good as well. Uh, not not a lot of people will agree with me that Surgical Extraction is in, insanely broken, but I feel like the people that play a whole lot of Legacy will definitely agree to, uh, to the fact that Surgical Extraction is just nuts. Uh, we have three Remand, and we have two Mana Leak for our Counter Magic that we're playing. Uh, you don't need an insane amount of like Counter Magic. Like This isn't the control deck where you're going to be playing like Cryptics and whatnot. Uh, so we get away with playing like three Remands, two Mana Leaks, and just counter some stuff that's necessary. Otherwise, we just kill it. If it's anything within reason that we can just kill at the end of the turn, we'll just let it resolve for the most part. Uh, we have three Terminates just as a end-all be-all for removal for us. For creatures, sure, there's some stuff that we can't hit with the Terminate that has like Hexproof or something, the, the Thruns and other various things that might be running rampant, but Terminate is easily like the best removal card that we have in these colors, and this is largely one of the reasons that we want to play these colors is because we get uh, resources like Terminate in, in the scheme. Uh, I'm also playing a Singleton Shadow of Doubt. I love playing very, very, uh, like, narrow, obscure cards like Shadow of Doubt just because most of the time, like, game one, you'll just get people with Shadow of Doubt because they're not ever going to expect to play against the Shadow of Doubt. So uh, when your opponent goes to, like, Scape Shift, sacks their uh, lands, oh, I guess even they don't even have to sack their lands because the Scape Shift is on resolution. But even still, like, this card nullifies... Uh, any kind of search effects that your opponent would go for, like Court of Calling, Court of Calling is much, much more relevant, and this one's actually applicable for it. So if you play against like the uh, the, the company deck and they like court for something, that it's super dope to play the Shadow of Doubt in response. Even if your opponent just like cracks a fetch or they crack a uh, expedition map, you can go Shadow of Doubt them and still draw the card. The, the nice thing about Shadow of Doubt and playing a card like this is it cycles itself, so you're actually still getting the card back out of it, and the amount of times that it ends up being not relevant and hurting you are, are so, so far and few that like this card just ends up being perfectly fine every single time you play it. Uh, we have one Dismember for removal and two Colgan's Commands as, as far as three drop removal goes. Colgan's Command is super, super versatile just because we get to... Uh, we get to manipulate a whole lot of different things. Like We, we have the mode to deal damage. We can uh, destroy an artifact, make a player discard a card or we can go as far as to return a creature from our graveyard to our hand and just make it hard for our opponent to play around our stuff. Uh, the, the best thing about Colgan's Command is just it gives us a wide range of options and it's just good in a lot of different instances. Like if we play against Affinity, like that, this card's obviously just broken and insane. So uh, Colgan's Command is just like one of, the, one of the super, super awesome cards that we just get to play in this type of a deck. And uh, the last removal spell that we have is Murderous Cut. Just kind of a uh, another good card that we get to play in this deck just because we're we're already putting so much stuff in our graveyard. We get the, the full value of being able to play like this card for one. So that's, that's pretty awesome for us. Uh, for the lands, we're playing two islands, one swamp, one mountain, a uh, play set of Scalding Tarns. We are playing a Singleton Bloodstained Mire. A uh, playset of Polluted Deltas, two Spire Bluff Canals, two Watery Grave, two Steam Vents, and a Blood Crypt. So that is the main board that we have for this deck. Now we'll jump over, talk about the sideboard. There's there's probably a lot more that I have to say about the sideboard than than anything because I'm uh, I'm very picky on the cards that I choose for decks like these because I don't really want to get caught with no resources or no allotted cards to to be able to like play against one match and not another so i like to just kind of diversify diversify what i'm playing with and diversify my uh 
allotment of cards that we have in our sideboard. So, first and foremost, we have Kalidus. Kalidus is basically here just as a singleton. Whenever you're playing against like creature decks, especially the ones like um, the the Court of Calling and Collected Company decks, just because they they love abusing stuff like Kitchen Finks, Murderous Red Cap, trying to go infinite with those cards, and that's cute, fun, and all, but. If we play a card like Kalidus and then just have removal, we just get to, to just bang on them. Like, Kalidus is just a good stop to uh, the, the Malira combos and all that kind of interesting stuff that they might go for. Now, it's not perfect against, like, everything. Like, your opponent might still go for, like, Spike Feeder and Archangel and just go off with that. But combined with removal, Kalidus ends up being, like, pretty insane and in, uh, trying to match attrition with your opponent. And uh, usually they're probably not going to have removal for like everything they're not going to have removal for the Kalidus and the tutus as well and uh if you let the the Kalidus go rampant that, like that card's just way too powerful we have another fatal push fatal push is insane against decks like uh kiln fiend combo otherwise like the the death shadow aggro deck uh it's good against infect good against any low to the ground aggro decks like naya zoo so any of those matchups where you see that applicable infect um you get this side in the fatal push and just have another resource to to kill their stuff this spell is good against like a lot of different decks uh there's no real just uh like this 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 spell is only good against like x decks like this spell is just good against like any deck that plays a lot of instant speed spells so whether that's like manipulating um combat damage in decks like uh infect or the uh the death shadow aggro deck or whether that goes to like control and your opponent playing like cryptic commands and romance mana leaks uh things of that nature the spell is usually just super applicable as far as implications go uh, we have one Vandal Blast for the decks like Affinity, and um, also if anybody tries to Lantern us. Uh, it's not the, the most impressive card against Lantern, but it, it's still a card against Lantern, so uh, we get to have it as, a, as another sweet resource for us. Uh, we have a Magma Spray in here, uh, just mainly for the Coco decks. Uh, I feel like that's the, the biggest reason to have Magma Spray in there is just for Coco. Uh, we have a Static Caster for any of the small aggro decks, and uh, any deck where you just see your opponent playing a lot of X1s, and uh, mainly just being able to like wipe out all the X1s in one go. Like if your opponent plays like I don't know, if we want to say they play like Empty the Warrens in Storm, and they they just like switch and aren't playing like Grape Shot, they're not trying to Grape Shot you or something. Like they empty and just make like a bunch of X1s, you can just like Static Caster them away, but. Realistically, there there are a lot of really really good uh, places where is it static caster just ends up being good, even if it just ma like means you siding that in against um, Eldrazi and you get to trade a bolt for a thought not seer. Like static caster plus like another card ends up being like really really sweet removal, and it's just like insane against decks like Inf uh, Affinity. Uh, we have an anger of the gods, basically again for like the smaller aggro decks. Uh, affinity, it's obviously really, really good against Affinity, but basically against everything except like Etch Champion and Master of Ethereum probably. Uh, their Master of Ethereum is definitely going to be bigger than like X3 for the most part. Um, but Anger is just like another really great sweeper for us just because we get to get rid of the board of like any problematic stuff. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier to cast in this deck than Damnation. Uh, I feel like you don't really have a super massive amount of lands that you hit consistently so anger is a little bit more reasonable than damnation although damnation is the better card uh, we have two collective brutality so this is good against like the combo decks of the format that would uh, implement instance and sorceries in any form of manipulation or the combo itself uh, so things like ad nauseum and whatnot uh, brutality is also good if you're siding it in against like any deck where you just want to have like an effect that uh, you duress them but at the same pace it's good against decks like uh, burn because you you can kill a dude you can do the mode to gain two life make your opponent lose two life and uh, you can uh, like go and duress them so like a against a deck like red deck wins Collective Brutality, you literally can just use all three modes and have it be relevant immediately on the spot. So a card like Brutality is is super, super great against a, a variety of different things, and I think that's where this card actually shines the, the brightest. Uh, we have Slaughter Games for combo decks. I uh, actually got to play this deck in, in competitive against um, Living End, and uh, if you... 
If you play slaughter games and you name living end against a living end player while like they're tapped out, you win that match. Like uh, it, it's a pretty easy way to win against living end. But uh, there there's some other decks that you can just like play the slaughter games and it's just good. Like you can play it against Tron and name some of their good stuff. Like you can name Karn or you can name Worm Coil Engine, depending on where you're at in the board state, and just kind of progress the game from there. Uh, we have two Molten Rain, basically just for decks like Tron. Uh, you don't want to, to let Tron just kind of take over the game against you. And uh, having the two damage is actually quite relevant, just because if you Snapcaster it back, that's like four points of damage that you have extra on board. And combined with like trying to beat down with Delver, that's, that's usually pretty insane. Uh, we have two counter flux in here. Again, this is just kind of like a countermeasure against like the, uh, the the combo decks of the format. So if like ad nauseum goes to combo off and they have pact of negation open, you can just counter flux and they can't do anything about it, which is is like really really insane. So that's that's great having a, a good answer to that. Uh, similarly, any other instances where you would think like, oh, it's a problem because I. I need to have a, a good way to answer something, but like I don't want to also have to face against my opponent's counter magic. Counterflux is just insane. Like you, you just get the the immediate answer of any card that you want, and your opponent can't do much about it actually, like at all. And uh, the the last card that we have here is a fine and dandy counter squall. So it's just a little better. It's a little better negate for us, just because your opponent is going to uh, to lose two life if we're countering their non-creature spell. So being able to Snapcast her back, it's kind of like the same thing that I mentioned with Molten Rain. It's just extra points of damage that you get to uh, to push through. Now, the, the the sideboard's not perfect. Like, you can go week to week and make small changes with it with cards that you prefer. But I think just as a uh, as kind of like a staple sideboard, this was my preferred sideboard for uh, playing in my recent Invitational where I, I had to play three formats so th this is what i rolled with and I, I was really really content with it so that is the uh the deck tech here for grixis delver hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please be sure to like the video and subscribe for more magic the gathering content there's going to be plenty more coming uh that you guys can watch and keep up with and i'll be back very soon thank you guys for watching and peace out